structural and the functional unit of life. You must be wondering what am I up to? Yes, dear friends, I am going to tell you about what our bodies are made up of, what the living organisms are made up of. To take you into the history of the cell, let's begin with Robert Hooke, a scientist who did his studies on the cork, the bark of the tree. What he did was, he took a primitive microscope, he took out the cells of the bark and he placed them under the self-created microscope to see some honeycomb-like structures in the cell. What he named them were cells, since they were the closed compartments. But then, this happened in the year 1669, long back. After this revolutionary discoveries, many scientists came in and one was Anton von Leeuwenhoek who discovered some living cells in a, in a pond. Then came Robert Hooke, I'm sorry, Robert Brown. He discovered nucleus. What was nucleus? Nucleus was the living component of the cell. If we talk about the cell, a cell is a dead component till it has a nucleus in it. Nucleus which is the control center of the cell. After Robert Hooke came the discovery of protoplasm which was done by Mr. Perkenji. Now to understand these terms protoplasm, nucleus and what the cell is we need to study the cell theory of life which was given by Theodore and Schwann. There were two scientists who were working on the cell theory of life. They concluded and postulated that according to the cell theory, all living organisms are made up of cells. Cells, the basic structural and functional component of life. As the building is made up of bricks, so our body is made up of collection of cells. All the cells are, have a basic structure and they are similar in their function. The only thing that is different is that they are not identical. They are different in shape, they are different in sizes. For example, if you talk about a neuron, that is the cell of the brain, the brain cell, it is supposed to be the longest cell of the body and it takes this shape. It is actually very long because it has to transfer messages from one part of the body to another part of the body. But if we talk about a skin cell, the skin, the skin cell is flat and rounded because it has to cover a long part of the body. It has to cover the entire body. Now, if we consider a muscle cell, it is an elongated spindle shaped cell. It is elongated because it helps in the relaxation and contraction. That is the movement of our body parts. So to have our body parts in movement, these muscle cells instead of being flat or contracted, they are in the shape of a fiber. So are called the muscle fibers. Similarly, the RBCs, that is the red blood cells, are disc shaped or donut shaped. WBCs have no shape. You must be wondering why WBCs have no shape. Because WBCs, the white blood cells, are those cells which are the soldiers of the body. So what they do is, the moment they detect any virus or any foreign material in the body, just like the movements of amoeba, they go towards that engulf the foreign material and destroy it. Since they are the soldiers, they are fight, they are helping us to build our immunity. So WBCs have no structure. So coming back to the cell theory, all cells are basic in their structure and function but are not identical. They are not identical. The third postulate of the cell theory was that all new cells come from the division of the old cells. That was a revolutionary idea in terms of the cell because people now started to know what they are composed of, what their bodies are made up of. So, taking to the next topic in this, there are two types of organisms in their structure. 
one are the unicellular organisms and second are the multicellular organisms unicellular are those organisms which are made up of one single cell for example an amoeba or a paramecium whereas multicellular organisms are the organisms which are made up of variety of cells they are a combination of different types of cells so they are multicellular as in you and me we are multicellular plants are multicellular a cow a buffalo a goat a dog a sheep all are multicellular organisms multicellular organisms are expected to be made up of 100 trillion cells especially a human being is made up of 100 trillion cells and that's a huge number that's indeed a huge number and since we are multicellular we have a level of organization in the body as in our cells the similar type of cells aggregate come together to form tissues the similar type of tissues come together to form an organ similar types of similar functioning organs come together to form the organ system and all the organ system constitute an organism that's what we are that is called the level of organization in a multicellular organism and as i have already told you that these cells since they are variety in shapes and sizes we have a larger cell known cell can you make a guess what am i up to a single cell which is largest and can be seen in the naked eye is the ostrich egg yes dear friends ostrich egg is the single largest known cell and out of the facts 17 omelets can be made out of one ostrich egg and that is one single cell but in a human body the the smallest cell that we talk about is the rbc the red blood cells are the smallest known cells so this is the variety this is the cell world now let us come to the cell structure that how these cells they look like let us study the cells in two different ways one we'll talk about the plant cells and we'll talk about the animal cells the plant cells are studied separately and the animal cells are studied separately keeping in mind a few factors number one the plants are photosynthetic and the animals are non photosynthetic second animals do not have a cell wall whereas plants have a cell wall why do plants have a cell wall because what plants need to do is to support their structure because they do not have a bony framework like we have so let's begin even if it's a plant cell or an animal cell every cell is bounded by a cell membrane that defines the cell give boundary to the cell so both plant cells and animal cells are going to have the first elementary basic structure which is the cell membrane whereas in case of a plant cell we are going to have a cell wall around the cell membrane in order to support their structures this cell membrane as you can see is defining the cell after this there is a nucleus in the center of the cell which is the control and coordinator coordination process of the cell and also called the brain of the cell and now you must be wondering that why have i made this nucleus in one corner in the plant cell and in the center in the animal cell that's because a plant cell has a large central vacuum around it to store the cell sap or the food that is why the nucleus here is shifted to one side whereas in the animal 
So now we have learnt two differences between a plant cell and an animal cell structurally. Number one, the presence of cell wall in the plants and number two, presence of a large central vacuole in the plant cell. The third very elementary difference between the plant cell and the animal cell is the presence of a chloroplast. Chloroplast which is having chlorophyll. Chlorophyll which is the pigment for trapping the sunlight for a very important process called photosynthesis which is absent in the animal cells. Now inside the nucleus of both animal and the plant cell is present a rounded nucleolus which is responsible for protein synthesis. There are certain chromatin threads that are responsible for inheritance transfer of characters from one generation to the other generation bounded by a nuclear membrane and having nucleoplasm. This entire space in a cell is covered by a jelly-like substance called cytoplasm. And all the important organelles of the cell are present in this cytoplasm. What are these organelles? Organelles are basically the organs of the cell that are making this cell functional. So the other organs in the animal cell and the plant cell are almost common. One is the nucleus, the second is the endoplasmic reticulum, the third is the Golgi complex and then comes the very important organ, the mitochondria. The mitochondria which is called the powerhouse of the cell because it is responsible for all the respiratory processes and hence the release of energy which is very important for the function of the body. I hope that the basic differences between the plant cell and the animal cell is clear to one another. Thank you.